PDC and torpedo we got. All right. She's bristling. Give me an open channel. Oh, man. Here we go again. Okay, you're live. This is the warship Rasinante. You're aware of our capabilities more than anyone. We're escorting a vessel of refugees away from your AO. Any ship that opens fire on us will feel the sum total of our state-of-the-art Martian arsenal rammed up its ass. We'll all die together. This is our only and final warning. Stay clear. You know, someone's gonna try and test us, right? Nah. Not today. So was, Cap. I'll take it. What's up, shipbuilders? Hey, for those of you that have followed this channel, you know I create all of this on a bit of a bootstrap operation. Well, Seagate recently reached out and generously offered to let me use their Starfield-themed game drive. So the footage in this video is courtesy of their drive. But not only that, I love tech that not only performs, but looks good doing it. And this drive certainly fits that criteria. Plus, at the time of this recording, various sizes are currently on sale. So I'll include the link in the description to this video. And no, I get no commission from it. I'm just sharing because I love Starfield. And one final plug, if you haven't checked out my latest mod, Iconic Ship Battles, Go check it out. I'll put a link in the description to this video as well. And if you're looking for more events in space and a real test of your own ship and piloting skills, this is the mod for you. Now, let's get into this build. First, an overview of the primary ship modules. I gotta admit this one was a bit tricky because I really wanted the engines to create a round shape on the back of the ship. I ended up stealing this engine design from Barden Builds I really like how they designed the engines and overall the back part of their Rocinante. But they used very underpowered parts, and even these engines aren't that great. So I wanted to see if I could improve on their build, and it ended up being similar in many ways, but quite different in others. So let's talk about it. The first major component we should look at is the reactor. Now I chose the SF40 Sheared Flow Reactor, which is a bit different from my typical choices of either the Pinch 8A for its high hole value, or pinch 8Z, but the SF40 does give a max of 40 power points, is a class C reactor so we can use all available parts, and is also at a slightly lower mass than the pinch 8Z. And given I prioritize the aesthetics with the engines on this ship rather than maximum engine performance, we do need to try to save mass in order to not have too poor of a mobility stat. Now for the grav drive, we simply want to choose the grav drive that provides our mass with at least 28 light years of jump range, so we can travel anywhere in the settled systems, and the R4000 grav drive does that for this ship configuration. For the shield, I went with the Assurance SG1800 shield, which has the highest shield health in the game. It is heavy though, so back to that mobility stat, we could go with something much lighter, but I also like the look of this on the top of the ship. 
but as always, the choice is yours. If you wanted a shield with lower mass but still great performance, you could swap this out for either the 28T Defender or the Vanguard Bulwark Shield. Both of those shields round out the top three shields in the game in terms of overall shield health, and the 28T Defender is actually the best in the game in terms of health regeneration per second. Okay, for the engines, it is actually a mix of three different engines. The first two types you can clearly see, the Ammon 7 and the White Dwarf 1020s, two of each. The Ammon 7 engines are actually unique in this game in that they have the highest possible boost speed at the very maximum end of their boost range, but since we're mixing and matching engines, we won't get that advantage on this ship. The other engine that you don't see is a single Slayton SA 4330 engine. This engine has six different flip variations, and what I would call the middle variants can be slotted into a one by one hab space and allow for additional ship parts to fit behind the engine. Now this might break your idea of true roleplay, but in order to get extra engine performance, I went ahead and placed one of these SA-4330 engines in the middle of the ship. Plus, these SA-4330s are some of the best performing in the entire game in terms of engine performance over and above their own mass. Okay, finally, for weapons. Now I could be mistaken, but I believe the Rocinante has a mix of ballistic and torpedo or missile weapons, so for this build I placed several CE-59 missile launchers one of my favorite given their high burst damage and that they fire four missiles before needing to reload. I'm also using six Vanguard Hellfire autocannons. These are the best weapons in the game in terms of hull damage, but I also wanted something that would do damage to shields, so I am also using six Vanguard Obliterator auto projectors. These auto projectors are also one of the best in terms of burst and sustain damage, and that's because they benefit from both energy weapon systems and particle beam weapon system skills. Both of these Vanguard weapons are available at character level 1 after completing the initial grunt work quest as part of the Vanguard quest line, and I think that they just fit the overall look of this ship quite well. But for the other pieces on this build, such as the reactor, you'll need to be level 60, piloting skill rank 4, starship design rank 4, or you could just refer to my Starfield ship builder tool, which I'll link to, and use other pieces that might be suited better to your character level. Now also, for this build, you're going to need to do a little bit of shopping in order to acquire a few specific parts. Specifically, you're going to need to go to New Homestead on Titan to get one of the NG-20 landing gear, and also two of the NG-15 landing gear. You will then need to go to the Valo system to Hopetown to get a single unique HAB piece, the Hopetech Fuselage Type A. Finally, head to Stroud Eklund in the Narion system to get one SA-4330 engine. And you can find all the rest of these parts at an outpost landing pad. Okay, on to the detailed build. I'm going to actually leave the ship here and we're going to build a replicate next to it so we can refer to it as we go along. But we will go part by part, piece by piece, so don't worry about that. And to start, as always, we're going to start with the landing bay. So. For the landing bay, I actually went with the NG-6 landing bay. It's got a little bit slimmer profile, uh, but also has two weapon mounts on the bottom. And so that lets me put those weapon launchers, or uh, missile launchers, uh, tucked away on the bottom, uh, which matches the one on the top. After this, we're going to want to grab some halves, specifically some Tayo 2x1s, and we want the bottom version, the bottom B version. The B version has connector slots on both sides. The A does not. It's smooth on the sides. And so I'm just going to take a look and see. I think we've got three of these. They head to the back. Yep. And as always with halves, you can choose whatever halves you want to use. This is just how I did it with my ship. Um, and for purposes of this build, I'm just going to keep it at whatever the default is. I'm not going to switch them around. But you can pick whatever type of hab you want. On the back of those halves, we're going to stick our reactor, so the SF-40 shear flow. And then let's head back to the front. This kind of makes for the main body of the ship here. Now, we do have a docker underneath, so I'm going to use this uh, 110 DP docker and just flip it to be the bottom version. Stick that right behind the landing bay. this we are going to put our landing gear 
This actually sits towards the back a little bit. So uh, on the front end of that back two by one. And then we're gonna put a structural piece behind this, this uh, Nova Cowling 2L-BA version. So we're gonna change the variant and then flip it upside down so it's backward facing. The reason we want that is not only for the shape, but also it has a weapon mount on the bottom side. It's one of the few pieces that has that. And so we're going to want that uh, to complete the look of our ship. On the front, we're going to use the Nova weapon mount. That's going to hold a lot of our Vanguard Obliterator auto projectors. And then along the sides of these halves, there's going to be some various pieces. So the first is a Deimos bumper. Behind that is one of our NG-15 landing gear that we picked up from uh, New Homestead. And we're going to have some cargo behind that. Um, I, can, I use this cargo piece just for the shape. Um, and you can go with the shielded cargo or not. The shielded cargo is a bit heavier, so let's go ahead and choose the non-shielded version for this rebuild that we're doing. It'll save us a bit of mass. Behind that, we're going to put this Deimos Wing E version. And then we want a Nova Thruster Array. These Nova Thrusters, they don't provide any actual additional maneuvering thrust, but you do see them when you're maneuvering, and it does mostly match the actual Rocinante and where its thrusters would be. For the fuel tanks, we're going to go with this M50 Ulysses uh, Helium 3 tank. Uh, this one actually is one of the most efficient fuel tanks in the game. So we're going to go with that. Now I'm just checking here. I think I placed these parts on the side too far forward, so I'm going to move them all one slot back. This is why I kept the model up for us. There's just so many various pieces on this. And then we're going to go ahead and just duplicate each of these pieces, flip them, and attach them to the other side. Attach those. And that's kind of our first main layer. Let's go on to the next one. see our one by one in that Magellan cockpit. So for this cockpit there are different variants of this. Uh, some are a bit heavier, some are a bit lighter. Um, the heavier ones they're not too much heavier, they just have a little bit extra cargo. Um, but the C1X is the one that I went with because it gets a little bit more cargo than just the C1. Um, it just one mass so it's, it's kind of a no-brainer but it it's, it allows for the place for the pieces to be on top and underneath, so those weapon mounts can fit underneath and the Nova cowling on top. And so that's why I like that. And then right behind that Deimos one by one, you'll see is where I've, I've got the Slayton SA4330 engine. And so we're gonna find that, and you'll see if I flip this once. This is kind of the middle variant, and that slots in. Right there. And then behind that's another 2x1, uh, a mid version. Actually, two of them behind that. So we're going to go ahead and grab two of the Tayo 2x1, the mid versions. Again, use whatever halves you want. You'll see how that clicks nicely right behind the engine. And so that gets us a bit more engine performance. Um, on our ship. Now, on the sides, we're going to use this Stroud nose cap D. Part of the reason for this is not only the shape of the ship, but it has a weapon mount on the side, kind of side mounted, um, which matches the Ross and look. So let's find out with that. And behind that, the Deimos bumper, just changing the variant so it's backward facing. And then one of these Tayo side caps. You can go with, there's this A or B version. Um, 
either one is fine. And then cargo just behind that. So this Caravel V102, again, shielded or non-shielded. So we're gonna go non-shielded just to try and save a bit of mass. Attach these pieces. And again, and same thing on the other side, just copy and flip, copy and flip all the way back. second layer. Now I'm going to copy this Nova cowling. I'm going to place this on top of that one by one. So you see you come in the landing bay and you go forward in your two by one and then up a ladder to the one by one in your cockpit. Um, just because that engine there. And then behind that we've got another couple two by ones. These are again Tayo but they're the top versions the top but we want the B again because the B has um, connector points on the sides the A does not so that's the A but we want the B You'll see there's the connector points so we'll get a couple of these and then a one by one top now you could just do a three by one and go all the way back again it depends on how you want your habs and then that Hope Tech Fuselage A, which is also a HAB, it's called a Fuselage. We want the A version, um, just because it has a little bit of a slope and magnetic points on the sides. So we're gonna go with that and get that from Hope Town. We're gonna copy our thrusters, these Nova thrusters, and place those on the side of that one by one. We'll copy the Deimos wing, put that in front of the thruster. And then let's check, okay, it's the wing D. So we want another Deimos wing, which is a structural piece. We just want the D version. And let's change that variant. So we'll go backward facing. There we go. And then in front of that, kind of sitting on top of that Stroud nose cap D are some of these Hope Tech cap pieces. Let's kind of flip these. So they give a little bit of a rounded shape. We'll change the variant of round off that part of the ship and then in the front copy this Deimos wing change the variant so it's forward facing now I'll connect to that one by one and then same thing just copy and flip and copy and flip all the way back up a couple pieces so let's delete some that we've already placed on our model here and that will give us some more to work with to finish our copy and flip all the way back on this other side all right basically one more layer to go so let's get that Deimos cowling piece now that'll sit just behind the Nova cowling and then we want Deimos hole behind that copy the cowling and flip it. And we're going to want two demo spine pieces. So the spine B piece. And I think it's the E. Yep, E version. Right there, that's where our weapon's going to be mounted on top of. It's not nearly there. I'm going to delete a few more pieces off just so I don't hit that module area again. Let's go ahead and grab our shield. We'll get the Assurance SG-1800 shield. It's got that 1600 shield health, highest in the game. Place that on top of that Deimos hole. And now, let's see. Yep, I've got weapon mounts on the sides here that I forgot. These are just for aesthetic. Well, no, I do put the Vanguard obliterators on those. And then on the back, we're going to get our engine. So the Amon 7 engine, we're going to have 
two of those. These are all going to be held together mostly by the grav drive. So that R4000 alpha grav drive. Let's grab that. So one M on seven on the top, one on the bottom, and then the white dwarf 1020s on either side. Does remind me I forgot this equipment plate on top of the demo spine E. So that'll let us mount our weapon to that. So let's go ahead and grab an equipment plate. Put that right there. And now we're ready for our weapons. So again, for our weapons, we want the Vanguard Hellfire Auto Cannons, the Vanguard Obliterator Auto Projectors, and then our CE-59 missile launchers. Again, to unlock these, if you haven't already, just start that Vanguard quest line and get through to the grunt work quest. It's basically the first quest. And then for our missile launchers. All right, let's go ahead and start placing these weapons. For the Rasenante, it has these weapons kind of spaced out uh, at all kind of cardinal points on the ship. So the last one's going to be down here on the bottom of that nose cowling. Again, one of the few pieces that you can have a weapon mount underneath like that. shipbuilder doing this that if I copy a weapon that's already been kind of placed in an odd angle it doesn't want to spin to connect to the other side so I'm just going to place one more of these for the men to copy that one there and then we're going to put four of these up front this can be a little tricky to get the weapon mount here to accept all four of them you have to do it in a certain order. Okay, so you see once I put it on the inside, I didn't accept it for the outside. So let's go ahead and take that off, put it on the outside first, and then on the inside, just like that. So again, put it on the outside mount first. Get it to fit. And then on the inside. And that's our ship. Now all that's left is to put a coat of paint on. And so I'm gonna go ahead and try and copy the paint that I've already got on this one. And to do that, I just open up the paint tool and just make a small little adjustment, like to the brightness, like a left and then right, one click. Uh, and that should, it looks like I didn't do it quite right here. Let's go back and try again. That should copy the palette that I've already got. So again, just go 
right and left, back out, and then, yep, there's my colors. So the color, the first colorway is a dark black, the second one's kind of a little bit lighter on the brightness, and the third is this kind of orange, almost red, but not quite, color. Um, and that basically works for most of the ship. I made a couple small adjustments, like on these demo spine pieces, to go both the second and third colorways at the orange. And then for all of the engine pieces on the back, just go with the dark black for all of them on both their first, second, and third colors. Um, that's mostly it. A couple more adjustments if you want to. Um, add a little more color to the cockpit, perhaps. But again, completely up to you. That's how I chose to paint this ship. Let's go ahead and delete this other one. You will see that um, all of our stats are basically the same. Our crew is a little bit lower, just because I didn't bother with the halves, but if we put on a control station, there's our crew at six. And our mobility is a little bit higher because we didn't use shielded cargo, we just used regular cargo. Uh, and again, if you want to change that mobility, you could swap out the shield for the Defender, <clears throat> the 2018 Defender or the Vanguard Bulwark Shield, which are both top tier shields, but a lot light, lighter in mass. And now let's go ahead and do a walkthrough of the interior of the ship. So to do that, again, just to plug my latest mod, we're going to go ahead and land at Mesa Manor here, which is where you would start the mod, which is just outside New Atlantis. You see it's got a nice view of the city there and a beautiful mansion that is yours for the taking with more than a few secrets inside. But let's go ahead and go up the landing bay and we'll do a quick walkthrough of the ship itself. Again, hab choice is yours. This is how I outfitted my version of the ship. So you'll come up into the armory. I figured if you're gonna be entering and exiting the ship, you might as well be well equipped. I'm having a weird bug on this ship uh, where this initial ladder has a ceiling, so I have to climb it. I can't use my jet, my uh, boost pack. Uh, when I rebuilt it, I did not have that problem, but whatever. You come down here, up the ladder into this one by one, which goes directly into the cockpit. So that's how you access the cockpit. It's a little bit separate from the rest of the ship. Again, I can't just walk down because of this weird invisible wall, so I have to climb down. But we'll go back through the armory into our workshop. You see there's our docker ladder up to the rest of the ship. And then all the way back into a captain's quarters, living space. Let's come back and go up the ladder here. This will bring us up control station, which is what gets us the majority of our crew stations, and then back into another living area. If we go up the ladder one more level, we'll get up into our science hab and our infirmary. couple one by ones, just a one by one, regular tile one by one, and that Hope Tech fuselage A. Again, use whatever habs you want, whatever you like for your ship. You could decorate these, empty habs, whatever you want. But that's going to complete this build. I hope you enjoy it. This is a really fun one to fly. I love the weapon loadout. Um, and if there's a build that you'd like to see in the future, let me know in the comments. Until next time, keep building.